Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris and Lego just sent me this brand new Lego Disney 100 set number 43226 set to celebrate 100 years of the Disney brand. This is a really unique concept for a set featuring cute kind of chibi-fied versions of a lot of the classic Disney animated characters from Beauty and the Beast to Moana to Pocahontas to Finding Nemo. These are mainly supposed to be animal side character or creature focused and it's certainly a very unique concept for a set the likes of which we haven't really seen before. Now, these builds were really nicely split up so that you could actually build this with multiple people building different groups at once. Some of the builds, in my opinion, are better than others, but this is a really unique ensemble set, and I hope that if this sells well, LEGO will give us more stuff like this, maybe even selling them as smaller two-packs, almost like a Brickheads type offering, but even smaller. It's a really unique build, so let's just go ahead and jump into the review. All right, so this right here is set number 43226, Disney Duos. It retails for a pretty reasonable 45 US dollars, a slightly less reasonable 48 euros, and 43 British pounds. It comes with four of these little modules, each representing duos from classic Disney films. First off, you have Lumiere and Cogsworth from Beauty and the Beast. You've got... Pua and Heihei from Moana, so right there, Nemo and Squirt from Finding Nemo, and Miko and Percy from Pocahontas. Altogether, they make up the Disney Duo set, and I'll say offhand that this is actually a really fun concept for a LEGO set, and something that I kind of wish that they'll do more of, because it's priced pretty well, the characters were a lot of fun to put together, and I can see this actually having a lot of fun play value in terms of being able to build it together. Speaking of build together, the way that the build was broken up for this was that each one of the builds was essentially given its own instruction manual and its own set of bags. So if you wanted to, you could get four people together and have one person build each of these individual items, which was just such a nice thing to do for a Lego set. I'm a big fan of the way that they had this all set up, and generally I think the builds went together really well. Some are admittedly better than others, and I think that there are varying styles here that do make it feel maybe at some times a little bit disjointed, but for the most part, it was a really nice build, and I had a lot of fun putting it together and seeing all the different pieces being utilized in unique ways to form the details of the characters themselves. So, with the set itself, it is again 45 US dollars, so if you break that up, that's around 11-ish dollars per grouping, or maybe around 5 to 6 dollars per individual item, where if you take one of these on their own, I feel like each one of these is a little bit bigger and a little bit better than what I would expect out of a poly bag, so I would say that the value is quite good. Sure, they are pretty much like the really small things, like these are really small types of builds to have, but when they all come together, and if you look at the value individually, I'm pretty happy with the way it's done. Now the only downside to this is that, strangely enough, they do use a mix of stickered pieces and printed pieces. You have new prints being introduced for stuff like the turtle shell being printed on the good old CCBS armor shell here, as well as new prints for some of the eyes, and a print right here, as well as prints here and here, but for the most part, if it could have been a sticker, they basically made it a sticker. They really only printed the pieces where they could not actually use a sticker for it. Stuff like the curved face for Lumiere, the curved face here, you of course have a curved element for the shell here, and this, LEGO does not legally put stickers on pieces out of other pieces that kind of attach on top of them, so they had to print the eyes here. Because of this though, you do have a bit of a juxtaposition between different styles when it comes to the different builds. Especially obvious when you put these two characters next to each other, where obviously the print for the eyes and the sticker for the mouth is really close to the animated counterpart, but this here is just really simplified and brick built in comparison. And you do again have that clash between styles when it comes to comparing all of them together, where it doesn't quite feel like they're all a complete unit. With this one in particular really standing out as not bad, but just feeling like it's a different style compared to the rest. However, I think for the review, I think it makes sense to set aside each of the individual components and just take a look at each of the characters one by one so we can really go up close and personal and take a look at the first one here, which is actually the first one that you start by building, which is Lumiere and Cogsworth from Beauty and the Beast. So the builds for these characters are actually probably some of my favorites throughout the entire set. They're not quite my favorites, but I think they're all put together very nicely. Here you can see for Lumiere you've got the nice recolor on the, or the nice printed piece on this macaroni element which they introduced for the Disney Mickey and Mouse limbs but have since used in a lot of different stuff. 
You do have articulation, so you can, if you want to, move the head around and also move the hands around, so you can really get all sorts of like a dancing motion with this. It's a very simple build that really is just set up on this dish piece as well as just adding a lot of extra detail using nice part usages of the Lego Friends cake topper piece for the top of the wax and the candles, which I think is really good. It is very simple in the way it's constructed. It's probably one of the most simple builds in the entire set, but you clearly can get the point of the character across, and really for a set like this, that's all that matters. Cogsworth, on the other hand, I really like how they've done this so that you have almost an expression like you've got one hand pointing outwards here. I just like that that little detail of mounting one of these on the other end is utilized to give him some character. Now the interior of the clock here, you can see that this is kind of meant to be something that can be swinging back and forth. Again, a printed dish on the clock face. Nothing too fancy to see, to be completely honest, but I do like the fact that when you turn the twisting knob at the back here, let me just get this back up on the stand. You can turn the knob on the back and that actually does turn the clock so you can see that the little gear clock mechanism there does allow you to make it talk back and forth which is a very nice thing to be able to be integrated into a build like this. Otherwise, these are, again, some of the more simple builds in the set. You really are just using pre-existing Lego pieces in unique ways to form the shapes of the characters, and it came across pretty well, so no huge complaints here. The printed Disney 100 drum lacquered silver tile is also a really nice plus to get for each of the displays of the set. Moving on, we have a display dedicated to Finding Nemo, and this one is easily my favorite out of all of the builds. Maybe I'm biased because I just really like Finding Nemo as a movie, I watched it all the time when I was a kid, but I just also feel like the builds are some of the most refined when it comes to these two characters here. The usage of the CCBS armor shell piece as the turtle shell is really smart, I like the new print on that, and it's something that you can use in buildable figures and whatnot as well, I kind of just a turtle shell decal on that is a nice thing to get. Unfortunately, the rest of these are stickers other than, of course, the new prints for the eyes because those are rounded, but you do have a lot of articulation on this. You can cause the head to move back and forth, up and down, and of course the flippers can be moved up and down and side to side as well, at least for the front flippers, so you can really get that swimming motion if you want to be able to show that he is swimming through the waters, like so. So overall, while this is mostly a display model, like you really just build these and have them for display, I think that this has a lot of good articulation and playability to it, with looking like the actual character as well. Nemo, on the other hand, is just so adorable. I love how they captured the rounded elements of his face by really being able to utilize the new Speed Champions quarter headlight brick. This was introduced first in the James Bond Aston Martin Speed Champion set with a print on it, but they have been using it on occasion here and there when it is needed, and this is a really good usage of that piece. I think the curvature is really nice and really makes him feel like a young clownfish, like just a cute little young fish, which you can see here. The tail can flip back and forth. You have, of course, course, the one regular fin and the one little fin, which is obviously something very important to his character in the movies. And there you have it, this is just another dynamic duo from the set. Moving onwards, we have the pair from Moana here. Now, I think one of my favorites, at least from this particular set of builds, is obviously Alan Tudyk's chicken here. This is just built really nicely. It's very simple. I mean, it's a really simple build, but I just love the way the colors all work out. You have a nice transition between the teal and the yellow, which just looks so cool to me. And the usage of the pedal elements for the feet actually do work really well as chicken feet, having those three prongs. I think my favorite thing about this build, though, are the eyes. They have basically recolored or they've introduced a new print for the boat tile piece, which is the curved boat piece, but they've just put a little dot in the center that is going to be so, so useful for so many builders. I'm sure there are a ton of applications that you can get out of that, but there it really does signify his kind of bird brain aesthetic, and you've got just the one eye that's kind of glazed off into the distance. I just think that's a really funny print to get. Pooh, on the other hand, which is the pig, is just a nice build. Nothing super fancy about this. You can move the legs back and forth. I like the way they have sculpted the head, but again, this one does feel a little bit under-detailed compared to some of the other characters, at least in terms of the entire face just being brick-built. I do like the stickers used for the head, though. That is a really nice touch, being able to articulate the ears like so. And you can even move the tail on the back here, and you've got like the mud splotches or kind of the spotted pattern on the pig itself. So overall, while I do like this build better than this one, I think this is a pretty strong showing for the Moana movie. Lastly, we can get to Pocahontas, and to be completely honest, these are some of the weaker builds to me. 
I think that the dog is fine. Like, you can obviously have a lot of articulation, the head moves back and forth, and then you have the individual legs and the feet being able to be posed. So you do have a lot of articulation here, and I like how they've captured the dog collar. But I think these just don't really work together as a duo that well, because I feel like there's just two differing styles of animation being used here. This is hyper detailed and hyper accurate to the actual appearance of the character in the movies. You have this specialized printed piece being used for the eyes, you have a special sticker, you really have a very unique cartoony expression, which by itself is great, but then you get to this and you just have purely brick built head with eye pieces that were introduced in other sets, they weren't even made for this particular set, and it really does emphasize the contrast between two different styles here that I really feel they could have just resolved by, I don't know, either not making this so detailed and changing the way the design was here, or changing the way they designed this one. The head also seems kind of disproportionately large compared to the body here. You're utilizing the new 1x3 pieces which also were introduced in Speed Champions for these rounded feet here, which I think are okay but also feel a little bit under detailed. The tail is super simple, and honestly not a big fan of the raccoon build here, I just feel like it could be a lot better. Otherwise though, that basically sums up all of the four little models for the Disney Duo set. Not that much else that I can even say about this, other than I kind of hope that LEGO will continue to do stuff like this. I feel like even if they sold these on their own for around 5 or $6, that is a really good alternative to Brickheads. They're a lot smaller, but obviously you can capture the shaping of different characters really well with stuff like this, and I feel like there's potential that if this does well, they could do a Disney Duos too, because Disney has no shortage of funny animal-related sidekicks. So, I'm sure that... Obviously, there are some pros and cons. I feel like some of the builds are better than others. I really like these. These are really solid. I like this a lot. These ones are weaker, but because they have clashing styles, and this one's just okay. But for a first set, and hopefully maybe LEGO would do more stuff like this, I feel like it's a pretty strong showing. The builds are generally pretty passable, and this can definitely be a lot of fun for kids to build as a group, because again, you have four different individual icons here, which means that you can build it simultaneously with up to four people, which definitely adds a lot of fun to the set itself. That's all I have to say about this. For once in 2023, the value is not actually that bad. $45 may seem like a lot for a collection of smaller pieces, but if you really look at the value and look at how much each of them is worth, like maybe Lego's pricing them at around $5 to $6 per figure, you also have a great stand, you have the printed pieces, you have so many different recolors being introduced here. I'm pretty happy with the value of $45. Europe has it a little bit worse, but in the US, I would say value is not bad, and I wouldn't mind seeing another thing like this because they clearly know what they're doing when they're making these small, cute animal builds, and there's a lot more where that came from when it comes to Disney, so I'm very curious what more is to come in the future, and that's all I have to say about this set. All right, with that, we have taken a look at the brand new Disney 100 set featuring all sorts of characters from across the Disney animated universe. This was a really fun set to be able to put together and honestly just makes me wish that LEGO will do more stuff like this for the Disney theme. I feel like there's a whole host of characters who could be rendered in this particular style that really does replicate the details of the animated versions with a bit of a LEGO twist. Now, of course, let me know in the comments below which ones are your favorites, which ones do you think are better than others, and are you picking the this up or have you already picked this up when it released on June 1st, 2023. That's all for today. Thank you all so much for tuning into Duck Bricks. Be sure to like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon, and bye for now.